When working with large lists, you might want to have subtotals based on the order in which the list is sorted. For example, in this particular worksheet called subtotals, the data is sorted by department. And within each department, it's sorted by status. So column C is the major sort, column D is the subordinate sort. We might want to see totals by department here. Now, not all of the fields can be tabulated, of course. In fact, primarily, we might want to know the total number of years, the salaries, columns H, column J. We certainly wouldn't want the total for job rating. Instead of summations, we could use averages instead. That's a possibility as well. But let's consider the idea that we might want to insert subtotals here. Now, imagine how much time this would take if we're doing it manually. We'd have to identify when there's a change in the department and then insert a row and then tabulate the information from above. We can do this all automatically with the subtotal feature, but you've got to have your data sorted properly for this to work coherently. If it's not, you're going to have breakpoints all over the place. So in this example, this list of some 700 names here, the data has been sorted ahead of time. There are no empty rows here. We want to use the subtotal capability. Make sure the active cell is within the data. And then on the data tab in the ribbon, the button subtotal, way off to the right in the outline group. In the subtotal dialog box, we want to indicate which change will trigger the insertion of these subtotal rows. And it's going to be a change in department right there. Much of the time, you'll probably want to use the sum function, but at other times, possibly average count. We use sum. And the only fields we really want to tabulate, say in this example, would be years and our two salary columns. Click OK. Now, we've got the account management department. We see the detail here. And when we come to the end of the department, we see a total here account management. We may have to adjust these column widths, so dragging across these columns right here. We'll just double click one of those boundaries to adjust the column widths. So we see the total number of years represented by people in the account management group, also the total of the older salaries and the newer salaries. And we see this for each department, as well as the detail that we begin with. But off to the left, you see those three numbers. These are called outlining symbols. If we click the number two, watch this list collapse. We are now seeing only the subtotals and the grand total. There it is right there. And that's certainly handy. Clicking one is not that worthwhile. It simply shows us the grand total. So I think what we're likely to be using the list for is to display this information, perhaps in a meeting, possibly print this, or clicking three, to see the detail and the subtotals. Now, depending upon your proficiency in Excel, you might feel that it's better to use this list this way much of the time, and you can. If you are inserting new records, you would want to insert them within each appropriate group. Now, it will pose problems here and there if you sort the data a lot, if you use pivot tables, these are in the way. So we might think of this as a feature that when we use it, we review it, we might collapse it, we might print it, that sort of thing, and then remove the feature. In this particular example, too, we do have a secondary sort. You don't always necessarily. We can also have subtotals within subtotals. In this account management department, for example, we've got a lot of contract people, full-time people, half-time, hourly. We might want subtotals by each of those categories as well. So we can click subtotal again in the ribbon, and this time, every time there's a change in status. Now, you wanna be careful if you are about to show a secondary level of subtotals, make sure that you do not replace the current subtotals, because we still wanna see those. We'll click OK, and we're also about to see four outlining levels. And now, as we scroll downward within account management, we have a contract total, a full-time total, half-time, hourly. If we collapse this list by clicking the number three, recognize we now have four outlining levels. Click the level three. We then see we've got our complete set of subtotals, the two levels, as well as the grand total at the bottom.
if we click the number two, we will only see the major set of subtotals and one as before, just the grand total. Now, something that will surprise you, what if you wanted to copy this list right now? We don't have a new worksheet available, so I'll click this plus button at the bottom of the screen to add a new sheet, just a temporary one, just to the right of subtotals. All right, I'm going to highlight just this data here to copy it. Control C, right click copy, any of the ways that you might copy. Go to that empty sheet and simply right click and paste or Control V. And probably not be satisfied with what I'm seeing here. Because what are we seeing? All of the data, not just what we saw on the screen. Now, if you're working outside of a filtered list, this is an exception to the rule, if you've got a list that has hidden rows and hidden columns, if you select that data and then copy paste it as I just did, all of the hidden data gets picked up as well. And so if you prefer not to have that data along with this, you'll have to choose just the visible cells. And this is one of the Excel's little secrets, somewhat buried in the menu system. If we only want to choose the visible cells here to be copied and pasted, We'll go to the Home tab, and then the extreme right button, Find and Select, Go to Special, and Visible Cells Only. You click OK, and already there's a slight screen difference there. It looks like it's highlighting each of these rows individually. It is. We'll now do a copy, maybe Control-C this time. Now I think you have a better sense of what we're about to do. We're only going to be copying the visible rows. So now I'm going over to sheet one, and I'll paste this just next to the other data that we had pasted, Control V this time, or right click paste, either way. And this time our list, which we'll adjust the columns later, is that list that we just saw on the screen. None of the hidden row data got copied. So there will be times when you need to copy this list. Come back here, we'll press escape, and we're back to our normal view. So. When you work with this feature, again, many times you're likely to want to see the totals, possibly copy these, possibly print them. You might continue to leave it in this view for a while. If you want to work with this and not worry about expanding and collapsing it uh, very often, you can hide those outlining symbols with Control-8 or bring them back with Control-8. And if you were making a presentation here, suppose your presentation is beginning with just this view, I just clicked the number two there. If you're making a presentation and someone says, uh, could you show me uh, some of the detail, for example, in the, uh, the ADC group right here? There's a plus off to the left here. If we click this, we'll see information about that group there. In other words, the detailed information about that group. Not the best display in the world by any means, but at least it displays the information about that group. Then later you could collapse this to take it back to the normal view. After using this feature for a few times, I think you will see it works pretty smoothly and easily, and it's not really a lot of work. It might seem like that right now, but it becomes pretty straightforward to do this repeatedly or whenever you need it without a lot of work. And so what I'm suggesting here is, if you no longer want the display, go back to the Data tab, choose Subtotal, and then remove all. Sounds drastic, but all it's doing is removing the subtotals. Our original data is intact, and we'll see it just like this again. So it's a great feature for giving us good summary information from a database like LIST.